give my What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in on today's car review. I'm your host Gabe and today we're going to be looking at this 2003 Mercedes-Benz E320. The E320 is part of the W211 generation of the E-Class and that reigned from production year of 2003 all the way to 2010. With the COVID-19 pandemic causing supply chain shortages and constraints on a global scale, the automotive industry, particularly the used car industry, has had a drastic increase in prices, especially with the usual suspect cars that are typically reputable for being good daily driver cars like you know the Toyota Corolla, the Honda Accord, the Honda Civic. All of these used cars have drastically gone up in price. This major reason along with a very solid reputation and a very gorgeous exterior and interior design has really caused this car to be the center of somewhat of a argument or consideration when it comes to perhaps purchasing this car as a daily driver substitute and you know would you rather get a seven to eight thousand dollar mercedes e320 or would you rather get a seven to eight thousand dollar really old civic camry uh corolla mazda and in this review i'm not only going to cover some of the performance some of the interior exterior aspects of the e320 from 2003 but i'm also going to get into conversations on whether or not this is actually a car that you might want to consider as a daily driver substitute this car in particular it's just been garage kept severely underdriven it's got about 87,000 miles so this is going to be somewhat of a benchmark for you guys to look for if you're going to be looking for a you know mid to early 2000s mercedes e3 20. So at the heart of this 2003 Mercedes-Benz E320, we're going to find a very solid and very reputable 3.2 liter V6 engine that is, again, extremely sought out and extremely well respected with previous and, of course, current owners of the E320. At first glance in the engine bay, you'll notice that it's a very massive V6 engine. It's very nicely presented, very Mercedes-Benz. That V6 engine puts out about 221 crank horsepower and about 238 pound-feet of torque uh, not all that impressive numbers but you know this is not where this car shines now delivering that whopping 221 horsepower to the rear wheel drive setup system that this car has is a five-speed automatic transmission that has the plus minus interchangeable manual shifting abilities which is um you know, not all that great, but again, yeah, this is not a very sports-oriented car. This is a very luxurious, very tranquil. The transmission, well, the whole powertrain as a whole is an extremely reputable, reliable, and very bulletproof uh, system. But before we continue, let's go ahead and get a sound clip of that roaring 3.2 liter V6 engine. <laughs> hey, it sounds, it sounds. So <laughs> now the E320 doesn't only have a very solid powertrain and engine, but it also has an extraordinarily beautiful design in the exterior. It's just the W211 just has such a unique and very exquisite design that you just don't see that much anymore with cars. It's just such a different look and I absolutely love how classy these cars especially one like this that has a really nice silver champagne beige metallic color very shiny very eye-catching in the daylight and again the exterior paint color on this car is immaculate speaking of lines and curves it's really really noticeable at the front of the car where you have like these two oval separated headlights that are just again just such in pristine condition completely see-through no fogging up I mean it looks absolutely stunning and of course it also creates like this very curvy line that extends throughout the entire hood of the car very unique to the W211 and even the previous gen as well just looks absolutely stunning exquisite yummy and curvy hey yo 
I also love how it has like the Mercedes Benz ornament attached to it. it it's such a luxurious touch and again it really gives you a feel for like that older style Mercedes. The whole front of the car is quite possibly my favorite part of the exterior design. The exquisite design and the lines and the curves are also seen as you move on to the profile of the car. Well, not only will you see these really gorgeous Mercedes-Benz wheels, again, very classy, very old school look. This also has a very beautiful side profile as well. One thing I actually was really debating on doing with this video was removing the bike rack or leaving it on. I actually left it on to show you guys that this is not just a garage queen capable car. I mean, in this case, it was for this car, but I'm also showcasing that you can use this car for pretty much almost anything unless you're like, you know, moving heavy equipment or whatnot or working as a mechanic where you're naturally just getting dirty in the, in the type of work that you do. So you might screw up the car a little bit. All the lines and all the curves don't stop at the profile of the car you also see it running through the end of the car where you have like these massive bulgy red tail lights that look absolutely stunning very early 2000s look when comparing the beautiful exterior design of the e320 to let's say a corolla of 2010 or perhaps 2011 or even a 2003 you just can't compare it this is just such a unique and classy design that not saying that the other cars don't look appealing, they just don't have that same flair and that same beauty. Now, of course, the elegance in the exterior design also is found in the interior of this car, which is my personal favorite part of the E320 Mercedes-Benz. There's just something so remarkable about the interior design. This one in particular, you could see has like this creamy beige champagne with a dual toned like dark beige color. It's an absolutely wonderful spec. I love the color combination, especially with the exterior silver. And again, just like the exterior, the interior of this car in particular is an immaculate condition. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost kind of scary just how well, well preserved uh, this car is, especially it being 18 years old. There's literally leather everywhere. There's not a single spot that I can, you know, identify that has really cheap plastic material, you know, other than the gauge cluster and perhaps some of the button area in the dashboard. But nonetheless, there's literally leather absolutely everywhere. You have it on the door panels. You have it on the, the armrest here. And next to the armrest, you have like this very nice plushy leather. It really does feel like you are in a couch almost. I mean, the leather seats, the dashboard in its house has leather. The steering wheel is wrapped in leather. I mean, there is just leather everywhere. And I'm sorry that you guys are hearing the word leather so much, but that just shows the quality and the, the testament to Mercedes-Benz design and, and the amount of care and love that they give to their cars. And of course, with that nice leather, you also get a lot of wood trim inserts all over the car, especially on the door panels here, on the center console uh, where the gear shifter is. There's wood absolutely everywhere. The steering wheel has a really nice design. Of course, it is leather wrapped and stitched. It looks absolutely stunning. I really like how, you know, how big the the steering wheel is it's not only is the interior part of this car absolutely gorgeous it also has a lot of comfort features that are pretty standard in today's contemporary world of cars for example you have power windows all around you actually have a sunroof as well which i believe was an option at the time this one's completely fully functioning this also has memory seats as well which I mean, it's pretty standard nowadays with some cars. It's got obviously cruise control as well. Unfortunately, this does not have active Bluetooth capability. I believe in 2004, that's when they made it available, but you had to actually um, get it as an option or have it coded at the dealership. And you also have a pretty good sound system. So Not much bass going on there, but either way, it's a great sound system. I mean, there's some really cool features that this car has. I also wanna make a comment on these seats. Not only are they, again, very nicely stitched and put together, they look really nice and pristine, but they're also so comfortable, guys. I absolutely love how comfortable they are. The holsters are not that tight, 
So you, again, it's not a sporty car, but they're just right and they fit perfectly. The whole seat reclines pretty much in every direction you can possibly think of. Of course, the more buttons, electric components that you have, the more likely they are to go bad. But you know, nonetheless, let's not worry about that. <laughs> this is a Mercedes Benz and it's a very good feeling seats, very luxurious feel. Absolutely love it. Now the spacing with this car again is pretty much extraordinary. There's not only a lot of space for you to actually extend your arms and just drive comfortably, but there's also a lot of storage room. There's pockets on the door. There's a lot of areas in the center console to you know put some little items here and there. Of course, the glove compartment's pretty big. So if we make our way towards the rear of the car, which is again where the executives, perhaps the kids, the Geschäftsmann, which is the businessman in German, will probably sit here. And as you guys can see, there's some pretty noticeable uh, space back here. I'm about six foot two, uh, so it is a pretty comfortable fit. Of course, it's not an S-class uh, amount of space here, but it is, again, very reasonable. The beauty and the luxurious aspect does not fade away back here. You have the wood trim here. You actually have little components here, like a little ashtray as well. Uh, I'm not a smoker, so I don't really find that too valuable. Uh, but you also have you know, little compartments here to put some brochures. Uh, you can extend this little section here, which divides the passengers back here. Open it up. You know, you can put your business cards here. Put some pens. I mean, this is some serious stuff. This was a, an executive car. You know, in today's standards, you know, if you're daily driving this by yourself, may not mean much, but you know, it's really cool that this car has this capabilities. And this also has ventilation ports here for you to get some air and you can obviously control it. Uh, little section here that has a uh, cigarette lighter that of course you can put your charger there to charge or whatever electronic devices you need. And again, the rear seats are so comfortable uh, compared to like a C-Class that is a little bit more compact. You don't actually have like the, I believe this is the C-pillar back here. Uh, kind of extending in here and crushing it so you do have a lot of elbow room so again very comfortable stuff if you plan on buying this and you're thinking about your kids or perhaps uh, you're thinking of buying it for yourself and you're gonna get a chauffeur your wife <laughs> but uh, either way very comfortable back here all right guys so now that we've talked a little bit about the performance aspect the exterior and interior aspects of this car it's now it's time to go ahead and get started with the driving portion of this review so without further ado let's go ahead and get started all right guys so we are now on the road driving the e320 mercedes-benz and boy oh boy does it feel so good this just has the regular suspension that's non-aromatic and it, it again it just drives so well i'm gonna give it some speed right now so you guys can get a real sense of that v6 <laughs> okay so uh definitely not the quickest time around uh but the shifts right now i'm gonna go ahead and try it on the manual mode Okay, so the shifts are not as responsive as I thought they would be. Another thing that I noticed about this car is that the sound insulation is really, really good. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's completely noise canceling like you'll have in like, let's say a Rolls Royce Phantom or a, a Bentley Volzane, but it's definitely, definitely better than any other uh, comparable economic car in the conversation of a daily driver and another thing about the experience of driving this car is that you don't hear any creaking or cracking from plastic or any bad quality or like poor quality materials and there's no sound whatsoever honestly the only sound you'll probably get is from the wind noise uh, created by the bike rack but that's pretty much it i mean you you get a little hint of the v6 when you're pushing it just a little bit like this <laughs> uh, but aside from that, you don't hear any creaking from any of the materials. Again, it really depends on which Mercedes, which particular car you buy. This one, again, is part of that immaculate 1%, but drives absolutely like a dream, guys. Honestly, it it's just feels so good. Now, another interesting fact about the E320 Mercedes is that this car was actually used. I'm not sure if it's still being used as of right now, but it was used in Europe as part of the taxi fleet in countries like, let's say, Germany, 
Austria and Spain um, actually while I was living in Spain and I visited in Austria I would see these cars very regularly as part of the taxi fleet the owner of this car had mentioned to me that one of the reasons why he actually purchased the e320 was because of that little fact well one of the reasons was because other European countries were actually using them in their taxi fleet and taxis get used pretty aggressively I mean not only from a interior uh, perspective or aspect but also in performance I mean you want to have a car that is strong uh, dependable bulletproof and that's exactly what the e320 was uh, or is actually uh, they just have a very solid powertrain of course there are some issues here and there but I keep going back to the ride quality and the suspension but it is really really comfortable and I, I, I sound very redundant and repetitive uh, but there's just no other way of really putting it out there that it's just such a wonderful drive so if we're talking about mpg uh we're probably going to get about 17 to 18 miles per gallon in the city obviously that definitely changes depending on how you drive it whether you're driving in a metropolitan area or in the rural suburbs uh, but nonetheless you should be getting around 18 miles per gallon city and about 24 on the highway or not only does it ride very comfortably but you also do feel like a million dollar man or woman when you drive this car not only because it again feels good but it also looks really really cool everything just ties in so nicely you know the nice interior the, the, the gorgeous exterior look, the fact that you can look down at the road and actually see the Mercedes-Benz ornament there to showcase that you're in a Mercedes-Benz if the steering wheel wasn't already enough. Uh, but everything just looks absolutely stunning. The whole entire vibe is just there. Whether or not you're going to work or to a meeting to close a deal or perhaps going to a nice little brunch in the Biltmore or you know even something as less formal like just going to with your boys to go biking and and just enjoying your pastimes and your passions this car can do it all and all the time that you're in the car and really enjoying it and using it as a transportation method so now let's talk a little bit about some of the ups and downs when it comes to daily driving this car when you daily drive a car, you accelerate the wear and tear of all of the components, exterior and of course interior wise. So is this gonna be the best type of car that you really want to experience that accelerating, that wear and tear? Maybe not. Uh, for starters, a lot of the interior components, such as of course the safety features, the comfort luxury features, they all have really high tech technology back in 2003 and of course since then 17 years later the components that allow for that features to you know operate and to function tend to go bad so uh, you know do you really want to be responsible for fixing some of the electrical features maybe not just because you know the components are not only uh, Mercedes so they're good quality but they're also pretty expensive to do and to repair themselves another really uh, interesting problem that this car tends to have which is actually fairly common with a lot of Mercedes models which is actually really interesting and those are the motor mounts what that means for the car is well the ride quality starts to change it's compromised right so uh, when you are perhaps putting your foot on the brake and putting it on D uh, the engine or the car will shake a little bit more upon acceleration the car will shake so it you know it makes it a little bit uncomfortable motor mounts aren't necessarily a difficult repair to do but they are pretty uh, expensive if you have no time to do it yourself or if you know a guy or two uh, another really common problem that this car has is with the SBC braking system uh, the brakes on these cars are not necessarily the greatest and they tend to have some servicing issues um, for more extensive research on any of these topics by the way you can find the links in the description below that uh, link to some really informative websites and forums you'll also find that little maintenance repairs that you have to do for example spark plugs there's 12 of these spark plugs it's two per cylinder so the cost of regular spark plug replacements are a lot more than what it would be on a Corolla for example or a Camry it's always useful to really consider 
the fact that just regular Mercedes maintenance, oil changes, etc., etc., are going to be just a little bit more. But I would suggest looking for anything above 2004. That way, you can get like the Bluetooth feature as a as something that you can get coded into it for your music syncing, and just you know the little corrections of small little bugs that the first year gen models have. This car, like any other car, has some drawbacks. But one of the things that you will not be disappointed in is, of course, in the driving experience. So the actual you know, feel of the driving experience. All right, guys, so that will be the end of the driving portion of this review, which is now arriving to the conclusion of this review overall. What an amazing experience it was to drive this car. The E320 Mercedes is not only just a gorgeous looking car, both exterior and interior, but it also rides like an absolute dream. And even though this car, you can get it for under $10,000, it still feels like a multi-million dollar experience. I mean, I've said it so many times Times in this review uh, but it's just it drives so well when considering it to a daily driver car you know this could bring some drawbacks um, but overall if you can get it for a really good price and in the condition like this uh, of course and there's other things that you might want to consider but it is a very doable daily driver car and guys I really hope you found this video informative and entertaining if you did go ahead and give this video a like it does help out a lot with the algorithm uh, guys if you enjoyed this content overall go ahead and give me a subscribe guys it means so much don't forget to also hit the notification bell if you haven't already and if you're stopping by for the first time definitely hit the notification bell so you don't miss this is my next review. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you next time.